Welcome back to the Morbid Moonlight 31 Days of Halloween, where all this month we're going to be looking back at the career of the amazing Felissa Rose and giving you a career retrospective or a history of Felissa Rose in 31 horror films. And today we're going to be taking a look at 2004, uh, either 2005 or 2006's Satan's Playground. So Satan's Playground comes to us from director Dante Tomaselli, who we mentioned briefly before as being the director of a film called Horror in 2003, which might even have been Phyllis Rose's first comeback horror film before Nikos the Impaler, but I left it out just because she's got a comparatively small part in it. It's definitely not a quote-unquote Felissa Rose film in the sense that she's got anything meaningful to do in it. Well, this time around, Felissa is front and centre as the lead character, Donna Bruno, who's out driving with a bizarre collection of her family members, and whilst taking the scenic route out to the middle of nowhere during the night, her car breaks down, and yeah, it's one of those films. Strange family in a house, weird stuff going on, a lot of running around shrieking, and disturbingly weird stuff happening. Basically, imagine a smoky, kind of blue-lit, gothic, dreamlike version of the classic Texas Chainsaw Massacre type setup, and that's what you've got here with Satan's Playground. A film about weird people in the back of beyond, terrorising trespassers into their nightmarish domain that may or may not involve the legend of the Jersey Devil. I'll just say this one more time and then I'll stop just because it's such a cheap way of reviewing something. Compared to a non-film like Slaughter Party, it's so nice to just see a film that takes itself seriously and is trying to create atmosphere and do legit horror things again instead of just wasting my time. In fact, this is arguably Felissa Rose's first real starring role in a solid, serious, halfway respectable horror film after doing half a dozen or so bizarre little niche bits and pieces. There's nothing comedic or self-referential about Satan's Playground, but once again, is a film from a director that had made a name for himself amongst the hardcore horror fandom, um, with his films Desecration and Horror, although his most popular film would come after this, which was 2013's Torture Chamber, which did find itself uh, something of a fan base that a lot of Thomas Ellie's previous films never quite managed to build up for themselves. It's also worth pointing out that Dante Tomaselli, like John Carpenter and Anthony Scott Burns, is a director that provides scores for his own films, although he isn't the only composer listed for Satan's Playground, but he does provide this kind of nice, ominous, brooding soundscape that keeps things on the edge nicely. I'm always impressed by directors that do their own music, I think it just goes to show you how important uh, music is to the overall uh, finished product, especially with a horror film. To be honest, there's not a great deal to say about a film like Satan's Playground, because it's pretty much all atmosphere. Scenes of building menace that work their way up to the more familiar, kind of Tobe Hooper-esque sequences of shrieking insanity, uh, with weird family members doing strange things. And again, it's one of those films where realistically the characters in it are behaving in such a weird way that if you did happen to meet these people out in the middle of nowhere, you would get the weirds, you would get creeped out, and you'd think, nah, fuck this and get back to the car, but, you know, I, I have seen worse films that do the these people are way too creepy, let's go away now, I think. Felissa Rose here basically works her way up to the full kind of Marilyn Burns style performance, in a part that calls for her to react to things and portray the effects of being systematically confronted with horror after horror, as opposed to being really that much of a character in her own right, which I don't really have that much of a problem with, um, it's a testament to Felissa Rose's own charisma and presence as an actress that she's able to bring enough to the scenes that allow her character to breathe, that we care for her when the shit hits the fan. I think Phyllis's own natural charm means that we can easily empathise with her from the word go, which is something that is easy to overlook as being a lot harder than it must seem. Even though I'm always someone that prefers a serious horror film to a shonky piss take, the danger of a film like Satan's Playground that you could file under the slow burn category is that there's too much fluff, not enough bite, and you kind of settle into this sort of woolly haze of atmosphere, but ultimately end up with nothing but just this face full of fog that hides the fact that there's really not a lot of substance to what you're seeing, and Satan's Playground has got this certain kind of tone poem feel to it, where it's clear that what the filmmakers really want to do is kind of capture this look and a feel, this kind of series of images that speak to a certain atmosphere rather than a story that breaks any new ground, or actually an examination of characters or even any attempts to reach out to us as an audience. It's fairly inward looking, everything's pretty abstract and dreamlike where the logic's all a little bit cockeyed and people don't necessarily do things that make the most sense. The problem is that it's not this kind of glorious Lucio Fulci dream logic, but instead it's something that's a lot simpler, um, just basically a means of moving characters from one scene to the next. 
Ideally, dream logic in films is used to create that unsettling feeling that you don't really know what's coming next, and done right, it can create some really powerful hypnotic images by tapping into that kind of subconscious feeling. But in this case, it feels more like we're going through the motions. I think that what a lot of it comes down to is the feeling that Dante Tomaselli, the director, might be somebody that's sort of trying to do things that are pretty admirable, but that his eye for an image just isn't strong enough to justify this really deliberately overstylized approach to what he's doing. Um, I mean, making an ominous tone poem about scary weirdos terrorising a bunch of normies is one thing, but you've got to be able to demonstrate that you can cinematically walk before you can run, and I think Dandy Tomaselli just feels like he's missing out on quite a lot of the fundamentals of the craft that enable better directors to be weird and fluid and freeform, but never end up feeling quite as shapeless and undisciplined as I think Satan's Playground does. There's no love of images or the power of a truly atmospheric setup here to justify that kind of narrative wooliness, but I've got to say, it does have one hell of a beautiful throat slitting in it. I mean, Satan's Playground is watchable enough, and it's even got a pretty basic functional creepiness to it. I'd say that this is maybe Felissa Rose's biggest part to date, because she's in about 80% of all the film's scenes. Um, the Felissa Factor, uh, that rating based on how important Felissa Rose is to the film overall, and how important this film is to her career as a whole, has got to be, I'd probably say, a 9 out of 10. And that instantly elevates it above the norm just because, and it seems pretty redundant to actually have to point this out here, but because Felissa Rose is great. She's really likeable, she's totally committed in this, giving it her all. I think this is just one of those films that's pretty entertaining to watch, that keeps you going and entertains you because it's well made and intriguing enough, but which just doesn't have enough meat on its bones to really help it stick around much in the memory once the end credits have rolled. There's just not really that much that will stick in your mind from this, to be honest, other than this general kind of atmosphere. It's totally fine, um, it's nothing spectacular, but very much a film that gives Felissa Rose a real chance to shine. Unfortunately, I can't really give it more than a straightforward 5 out of 10, just totally average, just because it is fairly forgettable. Personally, even though it's more comedic in general, I've got to say that I think that Nikos the Impaler is a better film than this, although I very much respect Dante Tomaselli's effort here, and I'm glad he had the faith in Felissa Rose to promote her to starring role. I just wish he'd be more willing to give us something that was a little less shadowy and vague, and more kind of operatic and memorable in that kind of bold, classic Italian horror kind of way. And with that said, I think that will wrap things up for day four of the 31 days of Felissa Rose. Thanks a lot for watching. Anyway, please consider subscribing. If you haven't done so already, that would be a great help. And I will see you back here tomorrow with day five of the 31 days of Felissa Rose. Hope we'll see you then. Bye.